If you're watching this, you're probably aware that Bitcoin Cash is having another hard fork upgrade this November. But this one's a lot different than the others we've seen in the past. There are a lot of things that are happening that we've never seen before. And the things that we have seen, we haven't seen drawn out to the extent that they may this time. One of these things is the fact that between the two chains, there isn't any replay protection by default. So that's the purpose of today's video, to help everyone understand what happens to a persistent chain split whenever no replay protection is added by default. So first we need to look at what a replay transaction is. Whenever a chain splits, you have multiple blockchains that have the same shared history. This means they share the same keys, they share the same addresses, they share the same transaction data, pretty much everything. So if there are two blockchains, blockchain A and blockchain B, if you make a transaction on blockchain A, those transaction details are just as valid on blockchain B. So all it takes is someone to replay the transaction on the other side and the coins follow the same path. If you send coin A, it will at the same time send coin B to the same address. This is of course problematic if both chains continue to exist, so generally replay protection is added. Replay protection is when one of the chains changes their transaction format to be incompatible with the other. This makes the split cleaner, as no transactions can be replayed, it's a clean break. There is a common misunderstanding that replay protection itself causes a split, but this is not the case. Miners cause the split. We actually have a past example of where a split occurred without replay protection. You have to look no further than the split between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. When Ethereum and Ethereum Classic split, it kind of took everyone by surprise. In particular, it took exchanges by surprise. And one of the things that the split is well known for is all of the replay attacks that happened. A replay attack is when a user exploits the lack of replay protection for their own personal benefit. In the case of the Ethereum and Ethereum Classic hard fork, users were manually splitting their coins, sending a split Ethereum to the exchange and when they withdrew it, they received an unsplit Ethereum which they could split off and collect the Ethereum Classic, then resend the Ethereum fork to and do this over and over again to collect Ethereum Classic from the exchange. Now this happened a long time ago and I wouldn't expect the opportunity for this to happen again. Exchanges have obviously gotten smarter and took this as a learning lesson. Exchanges will most likely be splitting coins when sending and receiving to avoid this. So even without default replay protection, anyone can still split their coins by using some of the differences that split the chain in the first place. This allows people to move their coins independently of one another and allows for a lot more choice for the users. Splitting coins with this method is called opt-in replay protection. Now there are some voices in the Bitcoin Cash community that believe that opt-in replay protection should be avoided. Their argument is that we should only consider a transaction valid if it replays on both chains. But this position starts to break down when you consider that all new coins are already split. While all the coins in existence before the split are replayable on both chains, anything mined after that point can only be spent and received on the chain that it was mined. Having two different chains that replay the same transactions is not sustainable. At the very moment of the split, the replay starts to break down and the chains start to diverge in their transaction history. This is because the way that UTXOs work. Bitcoin values are called UTXOs, or unspent transaction outputs, which are constantly combining and splitting themselves. Take this Bitcoin wallet for example. While I do have one Bitcoin, this Bitcoin is split into three inputs, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0.4. If I want to send 0.9 Bitcoin to this other wallet, my wallet must combine the 2.4 inputs and the 0.2 inputs into one output of one whole Bitcoin. It then sends it and drops a 0.9 input into their wallet and 0.1 Bitcoin is returned as change into my wallet. Now, when an unsplit input is combined with an input that is split, the output becomes valid only on the split chain and is no longer replayable. So when split coins are introduced into the money supply, all of the unsplit coins that they touch then become split. 
So in the very beginning, at the point of the split, all transactions are replayable. But the very nature of the replay is to break down rapidly from the very beginning, and eventually severs ties completely. If I were to try and make a visual representation of the initial Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash split, I would make it like this. If I was to do one on the hard forks afterwards, I would do it like this. Now if I was to try and make one on what's about to happen, I would do it like this. One chain slowly separating into two with the ties breaking in between until the two chains are wholly unique. So to do a quick recap, replay protection does not cause a fork, it only makes the fork cleaner. The replayability immediately begins to break down as soon as the split happens and it spreads through the chain severing the connections, be it from opt-in replay protection or just newly mined coins. Deciding to split your coins is not doing anything against the network, it's simply putting you, the user, in control of your own fate. It allows you to spend the coins on separate chains. It allows you to sell one and keep the other. Do whatever you want. So you, as a Bitcoin Cash holder, have a couple of options. And this of course isn't financial advice, I'm only informing you of the options you have. Your first option is to do nothing. You can choose to see how the split plays out first before making any moves. As long as you don't make a transaction, nothing will happen to your coins. Option number two, split your coins. You can do this by having some split coins sent to your address and then combining them all into an output and on the other side, you receive split coins. You can make your own split coins by using the Electron Cash plugin and I'll link in the description the link to the plugin and a guide to use it. Otherwise, you could also get it from a source online. Probably the easiest source I can think of is Bitcoin.com. They've recently announced that all of their outputs will contain DSV and will be split on the ABC chain. You can deposit a very small amount on their gaming platform, and when you withdraw it, it will be split. You can then combine it with any other coins you have, and they all become split. Option number three is to keep your coins replayable. There are a at least a couple platforms that have announced that they will only be accepting coins that are valid on both chains, like Money Button. I highly caution against this because when you spend your Bitcoin Cash at any business that does accept split transactions, you will be forfeiting your coins on the opposing chain. There's nothing like spending a coin that is worth $100 and realizing that you also spent the coin worth $300. You would also have to have software that avoided any split coins as well as any new coins that are mined from now until whenever this ends, which we have no clue. Regardless of whichever option you choose, whatever you do, make sure you back up your keys first just to stay safe. So if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing this video with anyone that might be participating in Bitcoin Cash during this upcoming hard fork. Thanks for watching.